Hello everyone and welcome back to One Man Stream. I've had a lot going on lately. That's the reason why I haven't posted a tutorial in a while. And as you can see on the picture that I have for our backdrop today, it's a picture of uh, where I'm from, Louisville, Kentucky, downtown Louisville. And uh, one of the reasons I've been out of commission for a while is I was on jury duty. I was put on a, a trial that lasted the full two weeks. It was uh, it was very interesting and, and very eye-opening. I'm glad I had the opportunity to do it, but I don't think I want to do it uh, uh, again for a while. But uh, this is is, uh, this is my city here behind me. This is Louisville, Kentucky, and I just wanted to give you a glimpse of that today. And what we're going to do today, we're going to change things up. We're going to switch it up just a little bit. The last several tutorials that I have done have been basically on vMix UTC. And today I'm going to go back to uh, kind of the bones of what um, my whole channel was built upon, and that's vMix, but mainly uh, vMix GT Title Designer. And today we're going to uh, create this graphic right here. And uh, it actually uh, looks pretty simple, but as you can see, it kind of has some depth to it. You can see where we've got some angles here and some shading and some coloring. And you're gonna see from the very onset, this is actually a very basic blank graphic, but by putting these shadings in and putting some of these angles in, we're able to give some depth uh, to this graphic. So that's gonna be our focus today on one man stream, adding depth, or, like I, or as I like to say, adding a little spice to your graphics. That's today's topic on One Man Stream. So this is One Man Stream episode 110, and let's go ahead and get into this. And to get so to get started today, we're gonna start off in GT Title Designer. So as you can see over here to the right, this is kind of our, our layer and our title bar. We have descriptions of each one of the individual items uh, in this graphic that we're building today. And what I like to do is I like to turn off elements. And you're gonna see when I start turning off elements, this is gonna look like a very bland two-dimensional graphic. So let's go ahead and turn off an angle here. You can see where we turned off the angle right here. Now we're gonna do the left top angle. And you can see where we turn that angle off right there. And then we're gonna turn off the right top angle. And you can see where that went away. And then we're gonna turn off the right bottom angle. And you can see where that went away. Well, we still have a little bit of depth here. It looks a little bit strange now because we've taken those angles off of the corners. Uh, but let's go ahead and take out uh, these little edgings that I put in here that's given us a little shading. And you'll see where this becomes well, I got to do one more thing uh, on this right here on the image. I actually have this shadow here. So let's go ahead and turn that shadow off. And now you can see where this is basically just a gray rectangle with an image on top of it. And it's not very sexy at all. Let's go ahead and set it in motion. And uh, that's, that's what you get. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from the very bottom layer. And I'm going to show you how uh, we build this graphic here today. We actually have two different um, layers going on right here, but it looks as one because the colors are the same. And we did that so that later on, when we start adding the uh, shading, uh, it'll look like it's indented. Now I've got two different kinds of shading. I've got one I did where I add these little uh, 90 degree or 45 degree corners. And I use this function right here for it. And then I have another way of adding depth to this graphic where I'm using uh, rectangles that I'm pulling out, and then I'm using the skew function for it. And I'm gonna show you both of those as we uh, uh, get through this tutorial today. We'll start with this very uh, basic bottom layer here. And all I did was I drew out and I clicked on the rectangle button here, and I drew out a rectangle of this size. And I went up here to home, and I came here to where it says fill color, and then I changed it to this color. No, nope, it's going to be a little bit darker than that. I changed it to that color gray right there. And that's how we made the very first one that's uh, entitled main rectangle. The second rectangle, what I did is I made that just a little bit smaller just to show you. See, this is the, this is the rectangle, the inside rectangle that we made. And if I change the color of it, and you can see it's just a little bit smaller rectangle. But when we add the shading later on, it's gonna make, make it look like it's kind of a, a bordering frame and giving depth to the inside. And that's what we're kind of looking for. So all I did uh, for the second rectangle, and I'll turn it off. I came over here to rectangle, 
and I drew me out a rectangle about like that and then I just changed the uh, interior color of it um, I'm actually gonna make it as I said I'm gonna make it the same color as this but just so as you can see it's showing up right now I made it a little bit lighter color but we'll go ahead and we'll change it to this color right here and you can see it totally blends into the background so that's how we made these first two elements the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the right side shade so i'm going to turn that on and you can see right here it's just a rectangle and what we do is we're actually butting it up against the edge of this inside rectangle well i'm going to go ahead and click on it so you can see the outline and you can see the outline of that inside that second rectangle we made and you can see where we have this rectangle here butting right up against it so all i did is i came over here i clicked on the rectangle button and uh, I'll go ahead and do that. I pulled out a rectangle and uh, let's see, we'll go under format and it's 25 inches in width and 448, or not inches, but it's 25 pixels, I do believe, in width and 448 pixels in height. So let's go ahead and change this one to 25 by 448. And if we wanted to, we could put this right here. And I'm gonna click on the menu bar here and now I can use my arrow keys. And you can see I can bring it over and totally, let's bring it up just a smidge, totally superimpose it over top of that other rectangle. So that's all I did is I created this rectangle right here. Then the next thing that I did with this left side rectangle is I just copied on this one, right click, copy and then right click again and paste and it's going to bring it in right over top of this one and then all i did is i used my arrow keys and i brought it over this way and i positioned it right here so the next thing we're going to do is the top shade and let's go ahead and turn that on and you can see i made this shade a little bit darker and that's going to give us that depth that we want where it looks like this interior is going to be lower than this exterior here so all I did for that is I came over here, clicked the rectangle bar. I pulled out a rectangle again. Let's see the size of it. We'll go under format, 26 by 945. Let's click on this, or I'm sorry, 945 by 26. So we'll go over here, click on this, 945, 26. And then once again, I'll click on the menu bar and then I'll use the arrow keys and I'll bring it right down here and position it and I need to move it over just a smidge and that'll do us right there now it doesn't look like much right here but when I click on this and I change it to just a little bit darker color let's go back to home click on fill color gonna make it a little bit darker oops nope I didn't I made it the same color let's make it one shade darker there you go and then you can see where that shade there and after we add that angle it's going to look like we have this uh, interior rectangle lower than this top exterior rectangle so all i did on this is i clicked on it copied it then i clicked on it and pasted it it's going to change this rectangle four to rectangle five and then all i do is i click on the menu bar use my arrow keys and bring it down here and that's what gives us this so now you can see where we're starting to get a little bit of depth here. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do these small angles and I'll show you how we do that and then I'll just go ahead and turn it on. So let's go ahead and use this 95, uh, uh, this is actually a, uh, a right triangle and I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna come over here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and click on this guy and click on format and again, it's 26, the height's 26. So we're gonna click on this, make sure that it's exactly 26 by 26, so it stays that right triangle. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna grab on the menu bar and I'm gonna bring it over here. And what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to rotate this some. Right now, the, uh, the Z axis is on zero, but I'm gonna change it to 45. That's not the orientation I want. We're gonna change it to 90. 
That's not the orientation I want. Let's change it to 180. And that is the orientation I want. So we have it set up right here in the corner. It's just about perfect, but I'm gonna click on it again, click on the menu bar, use my arrow key, and bring it down just a tad. And now look what happens when I change this green rectangle to the same color as this. So let's click on this. Let's go back to home, fill color. Let's click this right here and boom, look at the depth we get now. I'm gonna have to move it over just a little bit because you can see where we have that white line that shows up. So let's go ahead and click on this, bring it over one. And there we, we gotta bring it down a little bit too. Bring it down one. And now you can see with that 45 degree angle right here, the depth that we're able to get. So now all I did for the rest of this is I clicked on this and I right click and copied and then I right click and paste and I do that four more times and it gives me these four corners here. All I have to do is change the orientation. There's different ways you can do it. If you wanted to, you could just click on, hold on your, uh, your control key and where these uh, arrows converge, click on that and then just move your mouse and it's gonna rotate that around. All I did is went back to where it says format and I changed the Z rotation right there for the different angles and that's how it's going to give me that depth that I want. So let's go ahead and I'm going to click on the next one, which is the right bottom angle. Boom. That's this one right here. I'll turn, I'll toggle it again for you. And you can see how immediately you start to get that depth. So we'll turn on the next one, left bottom angle right here. And you can see how we start to get more of that depth. And then we're going to turn this one on right here, our right top angle. It's this one right here. And you can see now how we have this bordering frame and with the shaded areas that we created and then coming in with these angles, we're able to really get a lot of depth in here. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add our sponsor image. I click on that. Well, right now it doesn't look too, too spicy, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here under, I'm going to click on sponsor image. I'm going to come up here under home effects. And then I'm going to turn that shadow on. Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't turn on a shadow. I turned on a glow. So let's click on that glow. And when I do that, you can see the shadow behind it, and it really starts to make this pop. It also, it, it actually makes the image look like it's standing out from the background now, which is really cool. Almost gives it a neon look right there at the end. So that's pretty much how this graphic is made. And then what I did is I went up and I actually animated the entire layer. So let's click on layer one, go up under animations, and you can see what I'm using is the zoom animation. I'm having no delay, so as soon as I click this button, it's gonna start, and then I have a duration of about two seconds. So now when I click on it, you get that effect right there. Now I told you I was gonna show you two ways to do this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you a little bit of different shading. So instead of it looking like it's going into the background with this new shading, it should make it look like it's coming on top of this main rectangle and look like it's coming toward you instead of going away from you. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add these two things right here, left top skew, and then I'm gonna turn on the right top skew. And if you look away and then look back at it again, you can see how it looks like this is protruding uh, out or on top of this background layer instead of going into the background layer like it looks right now. And all that is is because we're putting a lighter shade up here. So I'll show you what I did. I'm gonna turn on this light top skew and you can see right here it's skewed on both ends. That's one thing with uh, vmix gt title designer i haven't figured out how to skew one end and skew the other end in a different direction so all i do on this for this particular effect is i make this one and on this one we'll go under effects you can see the skew is negative 45 and that's what gives us this angle right here and then all i did is i clicked on it and copied and right clicked on it and copied and then right clicked on it and paste and it makes a second skew and then I click on it using the menu bar 
uh, click on the menu bar and then by using the keys I position it over here and that's how we come up with this one. So I'll click on this one and I'll go up to effects here and you can see this one is 45 which gives us this angle right here and then this one right here is negative 45 which gives us this angle right here. Now you can see that this a graphic is much more appealing uh, or is it, at least it is to me because it's not just a bland graphic if we turn these things off again there's nothing fun about this graphic at all I mean it's just a, a, a rectangle with an image on top of it but as we start adding the shading the shadings that we created and then we come back and we add the right triangles that we created we get that depth and then if we want to have it jut, jut out at us, we add these skews with a lighter uh, shading. And we get that where it looks like it's protruding. Uh, that's what I wanted to cover today in this tutorial. The previous tutorials we've been doing has been pretty much hyper-focused on vMix UTC. So I wanted to do something a little bit different today. And what we did is we created this graphic using just some shadings. We're able to, to give it some three uh, dimensional looks. What I'm hoping to do is come up with a graphic for either football or uh, basketball and incorporate these shadings to give us the depth that you see in this graphic right here and make the graphic pop from the screen look more three dimensional instead of two dimensional. And hopefully that's going to be the focus of our next uh, tutorial. So just as a, a reminder, this was adding depth to graphics. This was our uh, 110th episode, which I cannot believe. And if you just stumbled upon this site, you are watching a one man's stream. If you have just a moment, please stop by our website. That's onemanstream.com. That's where we have our graphics store and more. We have the graphics we've created during this tutorial series along with many of the vMix UTC controllers. They're just a few dollars a piece, but they are a way that you can support one man stream. And it wasn't my intention when I started this uh, channel, but I've had a lot of people reach out to me, so I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it for just a second. Uh, I do do custom work and I do do vMix and vMix UTC training. So if, um, if any of you all are interested in that, you can drop me a line, just send me an email to tim at veercast.com and I'll get back with you. Uh, I'm very reasonable. I know that I'm not a trained graphics person, but I, I know how to manipulate vMix and vMix UTC. And so I, I do offer that service if anyone is interested. As always, thank you so much.